Okay, we're back on. Ah, I got my drink. This is uh, this is canned water, by the way, from Aldi. Grapefruit flavored water, sparkling water, zero calories. Water in a can. The fuck are they gonna think of next? <sighs> All right, so this story. Oh my God. Okay, this was about the. Uh, this is gonna be part five or part six of the OJJDP ICAC in Indian country people story. Uh, just because when weird shit happens, I always document it. Of course, duh. What the fuck? Whenever, anytime something abusive happens to you, you have to document it and record dates of what happened and data, emails, pictures, all that bullshit. Come on. Really? Like, come on. I'm a nerd. What were you expecting? So anyway, the date here is uh, November, was it either 18th or 19th? I have to check the exit file here. Basically, uh, I did a shoot for the Shimmy Show uh, November 18th, I believe it was November 18th or 19th, 2014. I'll just check the date on the picture or whatever, because the camera dates everything or whatever. Uh, the problem, there was, there was no problem with the shoot. The shoot went great. So the next day I had a flight. I took an early flight out to California to visit uh, my family uh, on the West Coast or whatever. I had. So this was like a really weird, just a weird day fucking super weird day and now I know why everything happened the way it happened of course after putting together dates and documents or whatever uh, to understand this fully you'll have to go and reference the document called b4pp.pdf there's a link to it in the description look at it before they go and kill the link or whatever I got copies of it it doesn't matter but it's from the OJJDP ICAC in Indian country and they have my name on a PDF document Shimalis McBeth he's this guy he's a author, entrepreneur, he wrote some book, he's a, he makes movies, he's this, and they have me like listed with like fucking, uh, he's, he's a human trafficker, all these weird documents, and all this. I'm like I'm a scapegoat for this organization that uh, pretty much feeds on grant money. They're trying, I think from what I understand, they're trying to stop uh, human trafficking, sex trafficking, shit like that, and like it's like, do what they do. You know, I make movies, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But anyway, this story ties into me because they had another contact with me. Uh, this one was just really weirder than most though, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. This wasn't like the old uh, Dorian Peters Dominican Republic encounter. This was, this was in Los Angeles at the airport at LAX, right? So I'm, in this story, it's like most people probably wouldn't care. I mean, it's like, you, unless you're me, you probably don't care. But if you're from this company, I mean company, organization, department, or whatever of the government or whatever, it's like some shit like, hey, hi, I see what you're doing, this is for you, hello, hello fat girl, <laughs> you know, hi black ass, it's like we're doing romper room, hey, I see you, I see you, and you, and you. So anyway, like, yeah man, I fly out from uh, East Coast Florida to California. I have a stopover, I think, in Denver. I believe I'm on Frontier Airlines. They're famous for stopping over in Denver for fucking forever, and Denver's a horrible airport and whatever. Anyway, some weird paintings, of course. <laughs> but uh, I, after the connecting, whatever thing, I get over into California, and it's late, man. I'm 12-hour flight because I'm flying very cheaply. You know, that means long layovers typically on cheap airlines. And uh, I have one more layover from LAX to get to SFO. Right? It's like a 90-minute layover. And um, I believe, no, this is about in the afternoon that day, I think. So I'm, I have like some time to walk around the airport. I'm looking for something healthy to eat that's not like $30 and shit, right? So I'm walking around the, the terminal like for like a half an hour or whatever. I see an Asian girl, uh, kind of a chubby one or whatever. She gets in line behind me at like this uh, health food smoothie fish taco place or someplace in the airport. Uh, she acts. I'm in line. I'm talking to the hostess, saying like, "What are the what's the contents of your fish tacos and all this like health-related shit I'm into, right?" And uh, the chubby girl, fat Asian girl, comes up behind me and she's like, "Oh, I like the fish tacos." And, ah, ah, ah. So I'm like, "Oh, man, you want to get a table with me? We'll go have fish tacos together and whatever." Now I'm thinking like I'm already inside of the airport terminal, 
this, this girl's got to be like a ticketed passenger to get that far through the gate. So I'm thinking logically. Uh, just people, have, people have things, places to do and places to go. So in transit, most of the time you figure most people in airports are doing, they're in transit to somewhere or whatever. So I entertained that this was like an ordinary person. Not the case, you know. This is like when you're me, when you're shimmy, when motherfuckers come up to you in public. It's never ordinary. It's like I wish people could understand what it's like to be me, because the average motherfucker just might put on a fucking t-shirt jacket and go to work at Walmart, and nobody knows or cares who they are. But when you have at the fucking agents of the United States fucking government and all this shit just out fucking to get you when you go just flying to see your fucking mama and daddy, or whatever. It's like. Is all this necessary? Hi, I'm here, hello, what would you like to talk to me about? So um, I strike up a conversation with this girl while we're, we order the tacos and we're, ha we're having just like a conversation, you know, I don't know her, what the fuck? My plane leaves in an hour and I'll probably never see this person again, right? So I'm not as just as I am with this camera here, I'm real with people and I tell them the truth. There's no hiding what the fuck's going on. So the girl asks me, you know, so what do you do? What do you do for a living, whatever? And I'm like, oh, I make movies. I do uh, internet porn. I'm, I'm an author. I'm a webmaster. I do this. I do that. And she's like, oh, I'm so interested. You know, can you show me some pictures? Can you? Use... And like, right off the rip, I'm like, most girls. That's not the reaction that most girls do. Most girls will be like, oh, porn. Huh? Is that legal? I don't know. Like, a 13 typically negative reactions or so. But when anyone that's like thrilled, either they're a stripper or they're into porn themselves or they're hookers or some shit, and it's like they're interested in the shit if I talked about it like that, and they're excited, but uh, this girl is like of the latter category. So she gives me her background story, tells me that she's like a United Nation Salvation Army relief aid worker or some shit in California where it's like super expensive to live in Los Angeles. Um, I'm like trying to put two and two together how this girl eats and survives and whatever, right? Her, her backstory's not adding up. And uh, after like about 15 minutes of conversation, to make the short, to make my story speed up a bit here, she says to me, I'm thinking about getting into escorting, <laughs> right? And the girl, the girl is double my body mass. If I'm 170 pounds, she's fucking 340 or something, something, maybe, okay. 315 to 320 maybe, but definitely over 300 pounds, right? And I'm like, okay. Now I'm wondering to myself, why would she say that to me? You know, why? I didn't process this till like a minute or two after, then I'm like, oh, she's working for these people or whatever. What the fuck? So it's like, every time I go out in public, I'm getting this people like throwing a bait of like, uh, what do you want to call that? Fake hookers or whatever the entrapment thing or whatever. They want they want to throw this out at me, and I'm just like, this is interesting. Why you guys are getting paid to do this? Like you're seriously getting paid to follow nerdy old me around the airport and pretend to be a hooker? You're like, you guys get money for this? This is how the O J J D P I C A C in Indian country spends all these millions of dollars of U S federal grant money. I'm fucking with me at the airport, and they sent the fattest Asian bitch they could find. I mean, this girl was fatter than Kelly Shibari. No disrespect to Kelly Shibari, but I mean, it's like, wow. It's unbelievable. Wow, all over Raina or Raina or that whole thing, you know, it's crazy, man. So that's, the st that's my story about uh, these people, just like, this is life in America, and this is what happens when you become shimmy and you make movies and you do 2257 model releases, 1099s, and you play by the rules and whatever. Uh, some people just, they don't like you and they want to find some way to take you down, some way to bring you down. But we're just making movies here, and it's legal and whatever. So, yeah, you take care of me. <laughs> Buy my movies, I want your money, honey. <laughs> This shimmy, I approve this message. Uh, I film Dominicans, Jews, Navajos, and Sioux, and Asians too. <laughs> White girls on Wednesdays and bank holidays. Peace and hair grease. You guys have a good day. And that's the wrap for now.